come up with some myths too. I'm also now clinical assistant professor of integrative medicine at Weill Cornell. Just flew in on a red eye and try to give you my best talk possible. But uh, Dr. Rothenberg, I remember my eye doctor giving me 50,000 units for myopia of vitamin D every day. So that's how long I go back for vitamin D. I'd say one place of toxicity, just to mention everybody, was sarcoidosis. If you see a patient with sarcoidosis and they overdose vitamin D, they'll get hypercalcemic. Let's talk about IGF-1. And the reason why, by the way, the reason I took this talk is that many of you are going to be harassed by medical boards and medical agencies. And having spent 20 years dealing with them and their opinions, I thought that you should really know the data. Um, and that's what I'm going to try to show you in an overview. First thing is to remind you that the most important organ of the body is the brain. And we've spent a lot of time on pap smears, uh, colonoscopies, breast exams, prostate exams. When they say of this generation, they had their head and their butts rather than looking at the most important organ, it will be true. Everybody needs a brain health checkup. We will be able to repair the human body, and the brain is the most important organ. And growth hormone is really mislabeled. It's really a repair hormone for the brain. It helps with memory, it helps with attention, and you need to know the blood levels. The next most important principle that I say is missed in medicine, or maybe a myth, is that you're only as young as your oldest part. Every day I wonder when I read the paper, how did this person who's making three million a year die of cancer that he didn't know about in the lung and sit there and he never was scanned and for five years he had a tumor growing. And that always bothers me a lot and I think that it's really incredible that I know the insurance companies won't pay for the scan but at this point everyone should know that you're only as young as your oldest part and if you miss one section of your body you're in for trouble. And every day you know we have the marathons in New York and someone dies or every year we have the marathon and someone dies and I realized they had no electrophysiology study, they didn't have a CT angiogram and it seems that doctors are unaware that you really have to scan people with a computer. To put it in simple terms, Flexner's physical exam is now a fraud and that the only way to do a physical is with the computer. In addition, all of us are trained to be doctors who uh, treat with drugs, but at this point in our career we should recognize that a person who's 40 years old generally has about 10 diseases that I can find. And those diseases don't all need drugs. Some of them need lifestyle changes, some of them need hormone changes, some of them need uh, nutrition, some of them need marital counseling. At this point, every physician should be able to be like a great tennis player, have a backhand, a forehand, charge the net, and do it all. You really need to be an expert in all four modalities of healing, drugs, hormones, nutrient, lifestyle. And then the other thing that bothered me a lot in medicine about the the missed brain. Everyone seems to miss the brain as the most important organ that all of you have to become neuropsychiatrists. Whether you're an internist, a generalist, you really have to become an expert on how you change the brain. So just to give you that, I wanted you to see how we change the dopamine system. And that's the energy or catecholamine system. Or how do you change the memory system or cognitive system. And you can choose based on severity. Obviously, you're not going to give vitamins to people who have severe dementia. And people with major depression will not get better with just vitamins. And with computers, you can basically diagnose the severity of every illness and come up with a plan. Is it natural, pharmaceutical? And the same thing goes with mood disorders and people who are addicted to various things. And... We have uh, a couple things missing in this, like uh, Camprol is a homo you use it for alcoholism. But this is a general view, is that you can pretty much divide the brain into four systems, serotonin for the sleep system, GABA for the stability system, acetylcholine for the cognitive system, and catecholamines for energy. Basically, the brain is there to keep you thin and fit, dopaminergic, cholinergic to keep you thinking, keep you stable, keep you sleeping. If any of those four go, they are actually the best predictors of longevity. More than coronary artery disease, more than your cholesterol level, more than back problems, more than any other thing the studies show that having a good weight, which is catecholamines primarily, is worth 10 to 15 years. 
Continuing to learn is worth 10 to 15 years. Being stable is worth 10 to 15 years. And sleeping properly in a reasonably good mood and not addicted is worth 10 to 15 years. These core methods break into seven principles in which I already did the first four. But maybe we need to get a little uh, further along to the next two, which is brain dominoes, which means that each person accumulates a lot of illnesses. And as you accumulate more and more, you get to the point of burnout. Aging is really you burn up, you dry up, you swell up, and you turn to stone, meaning you calcify or you turn into petrified wood. And as you accumulate more and more illnesses, you get to a point of breaking. The brain always being the most important organ. And then finally, I'd say the seventh principle in which you always have to keep in mind would be that all of us are really pieces of light and no one can detect their illnesses. So right now, I would challenge anyone in this room to be scanned from head to toe with PET or MRI and whole body uh, various 3D ultrasounds and MRI of the pancreas and blood work and we would find five or ten illnesses you did not detect. Any more than you can tell the speed of a locomotive inside the locomotive, any more than inside an airplane you cannot tell that you're going 700 miles an hour as you sit there sipping a cup of tea. And the reality is that virtually 90 percent of all diseases are silent. So on those principles that disease is silent that a 40-year-old person's half dead, a 60-year-old person's two-thirds dead, a 70-year-old person is seven-eighths dead. In fact, a 70-year-old person is really 10 years old, and he is going 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, not climbing back into his mother's womb, but climbing generally back into the womb of this earth. You cannot detect that. So you need to detect it with computers and fix it before death finds you. Now, now I go to endocrinology, and I, I think it's hard to imagine having more fun than listening to Dr. Rothenberg, but I'll try to make it simple at breakthroughs. Breakthrough number one in endocrinology, believe it or not, conventionally, last week, JAMA published, it may be time to give up the oral glucose tolerance test to diagnose diabetes. And that's how long it's going to take to give up this silly growth hormone stim test which one is not available is giraffe two the itt insulin tolerance test is impossible and inaccurate and dangerous but that's what the way endocrinology moves so here's the history of endocrinology they're just getting rid of the glucose tolerance test they're just changing the tsh range from 10 to 2. they're just like leonard wartowski is just starting to say there's a subset of patients that respond to t3 they're just beginning to lower the parathyroid reference range where you have chronic kidney failure. So many of you right now, if you did your uh, creatinine clearance and your GFR, would find that you are in stage three kidney failure. That's what aging is, mild, frequently mild kidney failure. So the parathyroid has to be lowered. Parathyroid injections lower it. This is just in the literature. When parathyroid uh, hormone, Forteo, came out as a treatment for osteoporosis, better than all the conventional drugs like Fosamax, better bone was built, they still did not write anything about blood levels. They treated it like a drug and did nothing with the hyperparathyroidism of aging. 